was a uh, mind blower because, you know, when you sit and you think about where are all my streams of income, I mean, you know, I've been doing this long enough and, you know, been consistently averaging about eight to 10,000 a month. I mean, you know, that has been where I've been at. And, you know, then you get to thinking, okay, what am I doing wrong? How can I be making more money? <clears throat> and, you know, depending on the time of the year, that number can even increase. So when I started thinking about uh, the sheet, now it's like, it's more psychological to me because it's like, every time my phone rings, that's a potential customer. And, you know, uh, okay, if if I don't have a property for you, where can I put you at, so on and so forth. And this week alone, it's like two listings. Uh, I got a lease today. Another guy called off of one of my signs. The house is already under contract, you know, went under contract this week. So uh, I just started talking to him more and more, trying to figure out what his needs were. And he's like, well, I'm a first time home buyer. I said, oh, I love people like you. So why don't you let me, you know, uh, get you to a lender, let you know what it's going to take in order to get you into a home, and then we will make it happen. He was like, well, you're the first person that's ever told me that. So I was like, you know, I will give you a call first thing in the morning as soon as the lender is in her office, and we'll make this happen. So when you start thinking about that and you post it and even write it down, it makes it more of a reality to you to whereas uh, you want to make make it happen and you know that you can make it happen so you're like why not and after you do something the first week it gets easier and easier they say you have to practice something for 30 days in order for it to become a part of your everyday norm um, and then write it down so those are the only two things that I've done differently other than the spreadsheet. And even um, I have a new agent coming on this week. She will be getting that as well, because I know when I first started real estate uh, 24 years ago, that's what Keller every year they would say, okay, where, how much money do you want to make? And this is what it's going to take these many homes in order to make this amount of income. So once you identify what you want to do, how you want to do it, you will find a way to go make it happen. Okay. So let me ask you this question. So what, like the first week, so did you hit your goal the first week? The first week, like the first two days, I was somewhat struggling because I was like, you know, I got to implement this new form, this new form, this new form. I was thinking more of the form and then by day four like I hit my stride and so I was like okay I can I can do this and so by day six I pretty well had I was playing catch up but then you know this weekend was great so you know played even more catch up and then you know it's like today people started calling okay I just submitted an application I just submitted this I just submitted that and I'm like okay I see how this is all coming into play and it does work. Okay. So, um, um, Sharkita, feel free to jump in anytime and kind of ask any questions uh, that you have. Um, so, at this point, so at this point, do you think that like okay so now are you faithfully going in and basically kind of marking tracking your progress yes i am okay i mean that's the first thing i do when i wake up in the morning uh you know after i have my quiet time or prayer time whatever i'm going to do i go to the office i look at the sheet and say okay i need this i need this and i need this and then I start making my phone calls, checking emails and stuff to work towards whatever that goal is for that I've set for myself that day. Okay. 
have you added anything else? Um, because because we kind of started. Well, well the one out. thing I didn't have added to there as far as income, I didn't have uh, my new agents, you know. And now that, you know, it's warm and people are moving around, it's like I'm going to be adding agents, and that's another source of income. So that wasn't even calculated in the five streams of income that was identified. Okay. All right. So in terms of stress level, do you feel like has this kind of eased uh, a lot of your stress level or what, where, where's your, as far as organization, do you feel like you're all over the board? I mean, do you feel like you're focused? As, as, What's your feeling? Well, at first I felt like I was all over the board because I'm the type of person, whatever I start, I have to finish that. And, you know, I know it drives some people crazy, but I make a checklist and I check things off as they're completed because to me, that lets me know that I've accomplished what I needed to accomplish within that day. And I hate to see things left on that checklist, but you know, that's, that's a perfect world and it doesn't always work that way. But now with, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of like a day planner tracker or whatever you want to call it. I mean, this, it takes the stress off, but then still it keeps you always focused on what you know you have to do. Okay. Um, do you, um, yeah. So what, is there anything that you would add to this? Like that, that would help you be even more of a high performance person that you are? Uh, I guess the next thing that I will do is, you know, I have it posted, you know, in the office where I can see it. Uh, the only other thing that I will do or plan on doing is either putting it in my car uh, next to my screen or putting it on my phone to whereas it always stays before me because I feel like when you know that you have goals that you have to set and that they are easy, easily accessible to you, which stays in your forefront. To me personally, I think that that's what enables one to strive harder to achieve and accomplish those goals. Now, you know, I'm going to be harder on myself than anybody ever could be. So with that being said, uh, once I have goals and, and things written down for myself, I'm not satisfied until I achieve those goals. So with that being said, now that this is something that is being implemented into my business, I have to work it all the way through and make sure that uh, it's being tweaked wherever it needs to be tweaked at, quickly identifying what's not working and uh, readjusting and making it uh, work to meet the needs and, and go from there. Nice. And I think that that's kind of like the key thing, the key, one of the key outcomes to this is that when you discover why you're not that, and when you just immediately discover that you're not meeting your goal or, or something's happening in the business that's throwing you off, that's that time to stop right then and there and fix it and not have to then wait to the end of the month. Because see, when you're an entrepreneur waiting to the end of the month, and you just you're playing catch up problem. Play, yeah. well, well, it's not even playing and catch that up. Was, well, that's what creates the stress because right. see, I have to know that, you know, it, it takes uh, <laughs> over five to run my household. So with that being said, I have to know that I have that each and every month in addition to money that can be set aside for rainy day, whatever the case may be. And when I don't see that money going into that bank account, then that's where my stress level comes in at. But when by following just, I've noticed within this system and knowing that, you know, I'm already on target to get, you know, say I don't get quite at the 30 because some of my closings won't happen until the first of March or whatever, but 
March will be blown out of the water easily because I would have superseded my numbers and that target amount that I want to reach. Right, right. So I think that the biggest thing for entrepreneurs is that you can't wait to the end of the month to try to now start fixing the problem because if you trying to wait to the end of the month to fix a problem, it creates a level of stress that now blows everything else up out the water. Now you start getting desperate and you start reacting. And the one thing that I will add to this here that I've noticed is this here is that a lot of times you'll say, well, I only got to get like, I caught like a lot of times, like you'll say, well, you know, I only got to get five more. I only got to get five more. I only got to get five more. Well, what this sheet actually encourages you to do is, and then see that becomes mindset wanting to stay in your comfort zone. Basically, you want to have your, your uh, I call it your, uh, let me see, because I wrote it down. You want to have two types, there, there's basically two types of goals that you want to have. One of them is called your, uh, one of them is called like your stretch goal. And the other one is called like your, the your one that's easily obtainable goal. Okay. And it's kind of like, you know, you don't really have to put a lot of effort into it. You know, you just do your thing. But the other one is your stretch goal. And you want to go hard on your, on, on, on your stretch goal. Okay? So that's a big thing that I think that mindset will help us to uh, get, get and achieve those goals. And so, uh, you know, I think that that's going to be the, the big, big, big thing. And I was actually looking for, I sent it to somebody. Oh, here it is right here. I sent it to this person right here. So, um, um, Sharkita, did you have any, um, any questions or input that you wanted to add to this? Well, I have a couple of questions as far as, um, proficiency with, um, um, the new agent, uh, that you bring on. What, what incentives do you, when you think about, when I think about maximizing, I've been in, I've been, um, in real estate four or five years as well. So it's, when you think about maximizing, um, uh, or you bring an agent's on to bring to just for the, um, uh, what am I thinking? Just for the, um, the split or are you, what, what's your whole, how are you approaching the, bring the, at the addition of, um, agents on? What, what's your mindset? Well, 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 my mindset on agents is first of all, I want to know, are you going to be a full-time agent or a part-time agent? That's the first thing. And then right. even if they say, I'm going to be part-time, what is your long, what is your three-year plan, five-year plan, 10-year plan? And where I'm going with this is because number one, I don't want just a bunch of agents uh, that's not going to do anything because see, then you become more of a headache and a liability for me, you know? Absolutely. And and so I don't have time for that because being self-employed is stressful enough. Uh, right. Second of all, because I've never forgot what it was like to be an agent. So I don't do splits because I feel like if you go out and do the work, you should keep, you know, a majority of your money, you know? So with that being said, uh, I asked the agent, what do you need from me? You know, uh, if you are less than one year in the business, then you're going to have to work up to getting 100% of your money because I'm going to have to help you. I'm going to go out in the field with you. I'm going to review your contracts because if you make a mistake on that contract, that's going to cost you your commission. That's where your right. bread and butter is, is that contract. So with that right. being said, you know, it's, what type of agent are you? Are you seasoned? Or are you brand new? So those are two different conversations. And so once, you know, I identify very quickly where you're at, you know, I have one lady, she's a school teacher. So she's only going to be, you know, in the summertime. But like I told her, you can't go to school 
from August to May and then think that you're going to just jump in and have all these deals. You're going to have to work leases to get up to that transaction to whereas maybe you have some sales this summer uh, to supplement your income. So once again, it depends on the person, depends on, you know, what their needs are and so on and so forth. But to answer your question, for me personally, I want to be able to give back some value to you. So it's just not about a split or anything else because for the longest I didn't deal with agents because I did not want the liability. Right, right. Understood. Okay, so with the agents, okay, say for instance, let's utilize the, the, the uh, teacher that's only going to be doing it pretty much in the summertime. What? Yeah. Okay, so let me back up so forward. Okay, so they get 100% of their, their commission, and I guess I presume they pay you like a monthly or annual fee or something to broker them? I don't, I don't, I don't do monthly because, once again, so Margie, you know, if you're not... Margie. Hold on one second. Yeah. Because what, because what you're explaining is not is not the compensation plan that you set up. The compensation plan that you and you have to remember your compensation plan. And because you haven't wrote it down yet, I think that that's why you're not explaining it. Because the conversation that we had, because we built your compensation plan up out of this, the compensation plan would work like this: If you are less than three, less than what was the number? Less than three or less than five years in the business? Which one was it? It was three. Less than three years in the business. This is how the compensation plan works. You would be on an eighty twenty split until you hit one point seven million dollars in in okay. sales. Now, so one point seven million dollars in our area basically says that six houses, six houses right. at two hundred seventy five thousand dollars. At that point, now you go on a fee based. Okay, and what happens is that um the comp one of the values that she was going to give was that you're going to get uh, a social media training okay and that was going to help you to stay 100 go go 100 faster okay because if you had branding social media you had those that level of training you could hit that faster because you got you know six houses in six months okay that that's cool if you are greater than three years in the business and you're full time, now it broke down to where you're going to be paying. And Margie, tell me again, what was the fee? It wasn't five hundred dollars. Was it nine hundred dollars a transaction or something like that? But what that person uh -huh. got was remind me what the number was. But what that person got was the brokerage was going to be now paying for that individual to have again training classes because that's the one thing that lacks is the training the classes the education that was kind of a hybrid of the of the compensation package and then anything outside of that would then need to be negotiated with the broker okay okay so having said that when you Think of like your part timers or your 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 teacher that is doing it in the summertime. Uh, in addition to training, like the social media training, what when they tell you, okay, this is my goal. How do you um, what is your viewpoint on? in addition to training to helping them to accomplish that goal what, what is your perspective what is your what are you willing to do what are you willing to put in place what what uh, uh plan have you put in place to ensure there are to for them to work because one of the things that i found out is people may have skills and they may have the ability or whatever but not everybody knows how to apply. So how do you, as a broker, how do you maximize the potential of the agents that, you're, that, that are coming in? Because when I think of a brokerage, I'm thinking, okay, what, is, what, are, they, what are they giving me different than what? Than, um, than I can go and walk in any major or minor agency and get to succeed. What's well, going to make 
the one thing different. Um, and I've I've been, you know, before I got my broker's license, I, I was an agent for three years, uh, well, 24 months before I got my broker's license. And one thing I do know is <laughs> none of those brokers was willing to go out in the field with me. Uh, okay. That's the first thing. Because, you know, I can sit behind the desk and tell you to do this and do do this and do this. But uh, one thing about real estate is there's no, no transaction is all the same. And that's what I like about it because I get bored easily. So with that being said, each transaction is going to be different. There, I mean, you got those that you may need a sabbatical after you finish. You got those that's so easy that you'd be like, okay, am I missing a step or here? You know, what's going on? But like I said, there is no transaction that is ever the same. So with that being said, walking your agent through, uh, I had one young lady, this was about seven or eight years ago, she came to me, she had all these little scripts and stuff. And I was like, what? So I said, okay, I'm gonna play your game with you. So basically I start firing questions back at her. I said, okay, we're gonna role play here. I'm gonna be the buyer, you're gonna be the agent. So I was asking a question. Well, they didn't fit within that script. So like I told her, I said, you can't, people know when you're scripted. You know, if you come at me wow. at, a, at a script, even if you call me as a telemarketer, when you start reading the script and I'm asking you a question, thank you for your time, but remove my number from your call list is what I'm getting ready to tell you next. And don't waste right. my free 10 minutes because, you know, I don't want to hear it. Uh, so the difference that I'm going to bring is I'm going to work just as hard as you going to work. And if you're not willing to put in the time, then I'm not going to put in the time. But if you tell me, you know what, I'm a school teacher right now, but my goal is, you know, I'm going to transition into real estate. How can I get myself set up? Then we're going to sit down and have a actual game plan for you to whereas, okay, this is how you're going to get your book of business. This is how you're going to build your database. This is how you're going to do this. And let's see what works for you. Because see, the, the steps that I'm taking may not be the career path that you want to take. So once again, another thing with real estate, the beauty of it is there's so many different facets to this business, whether it's commercial, whether it's investing, whether it's rentals or whatever. I mean, you can make a lucrative living in any of those areas. You just got to be willing to put the time in. If you're not willing to put the time in, you know, so many times on the weekends do I get calls. Well, you're the first agent to answer my phone, answer the phone. I've been called three or four agents today. I'm like, sir, <laughs> I get paid to answer my phone, you know, <clears throat> and that's what I tell people. I get paid to answer my phone. So when you don't answer your phone or your phone is not ringing, then you're not in business. So it's, let, it's that simple. So let me let me interject this because we're we're running out of uh, we're gonna run out of time to start wrapping up. And what we're gonna do is the thing that I'm learning about the thing that I'm learning, and I'm I'm so like amazed and, and actually proud because opening up this platform now is starting to allow me to connect entrepreneurs together where now they can truly collaborate and make money. And I think that, so I've already put two individuals together. Uh, one has a product that she's selling um, and another wants to buy that product and sell it to her customers. Um, I'm working wow. on another co collaboration as well. And so, um, Sharkita, you and Margie, y'all are both in real estate. This would be a, a, a opportunity for you guys to collaborate, brainstorm, have lunch, however, put something together because there's pieces in there where you guys both can eat and gleam. And I think that here, here I'll, I'll tell this story and then we'll, we'll uh, kind of start wrapping up. So I remember this was about several years ago. I was talking to this guy. He was a, a, had his own mortgage company out in Florida. And so we're, we're going through and he's telling me like how his operation works and 
he's telling me like, you know, all these here things, cause I, I've been in the business a while. So he's literally just laying out his operation. And I was like, damn, I mean, I'm like, I was totally impressed with his operation and everything that, you know, he was telling me. So finally at the end of the conversation, when he had finished, I asked him, I said, you know, what's the secret to your success? And he, and, and I, I live by this and, and, and I even tell it to my daughters. I said, he said, Anthony, he said, I've been doing this here for 30 years. He said, I know, I know what keeps me up at night. I know what makes me crazy. I know what made me go bankrupt the first time and the second time. I know what made me lost my family. I know what messed with my health. I, he said, I know what doesn't work. And he said, so every morning when I get up with my team, we sit down, we do our meeting, and we make sure that we do not do the things that we know will not work. And so that leads me into what will make a new agent or a entrepreneur successful is the system. And as my oldest daughter tells me that success leaves clues. We're sitting up here running free willy, flying high by a kite, just, you know, going at it and struggling when all the successful high performance individuals use systems. They use systems and they're disciplined and they're focused and they win championships. They, they are high income earners because they use a system. Why in the hell makes you different? that on being on the average level, that you not using a system, don't use a system, is gonna make you successful when everybody's telling you it boils down to a system. And, it, and, and the reason why we don't do it is that because we love to live in our comfort zone, because that's where it's easy. That's where I only have to do enough just to get by. I only have to do, now I can do 20 pushups if I push myself, but you know what? I'm only going to do six. You know, I can walk an hour, but you know what? I'm only going to walk 15, 15 minutes. We have to arrive to a point where we now start implementing systems into our lives. And I don't care if it's this spreadsheet. I don't care if it's software. I don't care if it's a, a planner. Every single morning, you must do the same routine every single day. Because if you had a good day yesterday, do the same things that you did yesterday in order to have a good day. And then nine times out of 10, hopefully, you're gonna have a successful day. Now, will this system alleviate and, and wash out all the drama and the craziness and the stress? No, it's not gonna do that, why? Because we're in, we're in high production uh, sectors. Real estate is a high production sector. You got to come with your big girl panties, your big boy, and have some big boy draws, have a gun and a knife and a baseball bat and some, and, and be ready to bare knuckle fight sometimes people. But at the end of the day, when you get that $13,000, that $15,000 check, well, was it worth it? Well, yeah, it was worth it. That's why you got to have a system. And if you don't have a system, the problem will be you're either going to stress out and, and it's going to start affecting your health, which in turn means that you will die before it's your time. So what I'm going to encourage y'all to do is build a system and then require people that are going to work for you. And even it's going to be on your team. If you have contractors working for you, they got to work on a system. Because if they're not on a system, what are they doing? There's no way for you to track them and to know what's going on if they're not on a system. You got to get on a system. So, with that said, Sharkina, I'm going to text you Marty's number. I'm going to let y'all finish collaborating on the side. Um, I'm going to go ahead on and um, finish this up right here. Um, and in this call, Sharkina, uh, I'll call you right back, and we can just kind of, you know, um, chat a little bit. But I'm definitely going to give you Marty's number. And somebody, one of the chat uh, members was trying to reach out to you. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this here call end. And then we will catch up um, throughout the week and on next Sunday. I will see you guys more later.